20. Well, he's gone slightly wrong. Still has a pot on the blue, and he can hold for one of these reds, but uh, there's, there's pressure on this. 4-2 behind. He knows that Stuart's playing well. Well, he seemed to just yeah, throw himself well, into that. I didn't cue it at all well. He's... That was really edgy. Yeah, it was definitely edgy, wasn't it? And just reflects what's happened last couple of frames. That was not cleanly struck at all. Well, it just seemed like if they'd gone in, it would have been a bonus rather than playing it in. It's, he's under pressure. He's feeling it. Yeah, not the sort of shot I guess he was looking for after Carrington knocked in a couple of tons. Well, he's got a chance to do more damage here. There's no doubt that Stuart Carrington is in much more control of him himself than that Liang is at the moment. And that's the key. That's the point Ronnie O'Sullivan was making. It's a, not just about talent, it's about temperament as well. Mark Selby, he said, if you put Selby's brain into Liang Wenbo, he'd be unstoppable. But of course, it doesn't work like that. Everyone's different. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. This guy's shown a lot of strength at the moment, though. He really has. He's been impressive. You know, he, that, that second frame, if you weren't with us earlier, it was a horrible frame of snooker. It was 45 minutes, very scrappy. He was always in front. He had chances to win it, and he didn't win it. Liang stole it, and that uh, was an early body blow, but he recovered really well. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned earlier, David, you said that you saw the last few frames of his qualifying match against Mark, Welly, uh, Mark Williams, and you said you were very impressed by him. Right. Well, the last frame in particular, he was a, he was a long way behind. He was nine seven up, sixty odd behind, cleared up to win on the black. You know, and if Williams wins that frame, you start to maybe fancy Mark to win the match. But held himself together really well. That was a good omen coming into this match because he beat the top seeded player in the qualifiers. Mark Williams, world number seventeen, highest ranked player in that qualifying event, and highly fancied to reach the crucible again. 16. Yeah, and before that match with Mark, he uh, he tucked away Alex Borg 10-2, and also Andrew Higginson, 10-6. Yes, he'd already won 30 frames before getting here, so he was toughened up by that week. 17. Well, I'll be into them here. Slightly loose one on the right-hand side. He could sort of push that out towards the middle. I think he's got enough angle on the black here to get into them. And he has got a lot of cue power, actually, Stuart. He can uh, generate a lot of spin. And we know that these cloths are very reactive, responsive. He's got them. Oh, done it again. Got them open, landed perfectly on one. Well, he's just serene at the moment. We saw Liang miss that blue, didn't really get close to it. Stuart Carrington, the exact opposite. He looks really confident, really calm, really composed. Yeah, can do no wrong. And a great chance here to take a three-frame lead. And, of course, that would guarantee he'd be in front coming back tonight for the last session. I think the thing is, as well, the draw for Stuart here is ideal for him because if they played a top flight, I'm not saying he wouldn't have done any good, but he would have had his work on. But playing Liang, I know he was at top flight, but we know that Liang can be a little bit erratic. We've said that. Um, he's not the strongest player in the field, but so Stuart would be thinking, well, yeah, I've got a chance here. They'd be thinking I've got a chance coming here playing against anybody, but if he'd been playing, you know, a real top flighter, Liang's in there. I'm not, not putting him down, of course. He's a great player. But he can be a little bit inconsistent at times. And that's, that's the weakness, I feel, that Stuart has to play on. He knows he has a chance to win this match. Put himself into the second round, guaranteed £25,000. Who knows? He might come up against Ding Junhui. I 
but at the moment there's no doubt that he's got the upper hand. And uh, if he can put this one on the board, with two more to come, he could do some real damage. Well, what he's shown here, he's great mental strength. He looks really just relaxed, just focused on what he's doing. Not thinking about anything else, just focusing on that snooker table. Yeah, I did mention earlier on as well, he, he feels that uh, he's involved with the tournament. He feels that he, sh he, no, he, he should be here. He's, he's got the game. He's starting to win the matches. He's starting to get the consistency. And uh, he's believing in himself. He's comfortable in this arena. Just had a couple of seasons where he was finding his feet on the main tour. It just happened that way sometimes. Well, there's enough on for another century. Uh, he's <laughs> 48, he's got to get the frame one first, but this is a very impressive spell from 49. the Grimsby man. <coughs> like the contact on that one. Just left him a little bit straight on this black, and he might come straight back off the side cushion for the red to the middle. Don't know what sort of angle he's got on this black one, but all uh, oh, this, he's going to have to sit in that chair a little bit longer. It's not been a, a good spell for him over the last hour or so. No, and the blue he missed, I mean, it wasn't an easy shot at all, but the way he played it was not a good sign. No, it just seemed to say he seemed to throw himself into it. <coughs> there was a lot of body movement. So Carrington 36 in front, 50. just checking this course. Couple of reds needed still for 5 2. Fifty-seven. Not sure if these two reds both go. You can obviously the one of the blues is available, but to see which way he plays this. He's got a good angle on the green here to do whatever he wants to do, really. The left hand one of the two could be available. Didn't want to catch the pink. 60. Just slightly out of position now. And he's not over the line. All he needed was the red and the black. I mean, he could play the left arm one, but he's still looking at this one he intended to play on. 's already made up his mind to have a go at this one He's, as long as he doesn't push the other red into the black he should hopefully be on the black well played 61. he's playing some stuff now well He's got the confidence to recover if he's slightly out of position. Earlier on, he would have missed that, I think, but he's just in a golden spell, and this black, and it's snooker's required. Stuart Carrington has put together three great frames of snooker, and it could yet be three straight centuries. I think also, Dave, it's been noticeable from Stuart that he's slowed his tempo down. He's given himself more thinking time. Slowed the cue action down. Everything is good now. Well, these are the players, Mike, who've made three centuries in three straight frames at the Crucible. John Higgins, Ronnie O'Sullivan, Mark Selby and Neil Robertson. So that's the company Stuart Carrington would be in if he can do it. Well, I hope so. Fingers crossed. 
Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> well, the only problem he's got is that... I don't know, can he get there? Just doing the counter. 76. Yeah, you can. I'm just thinking about the pink, because he noticed that pink under the cushion a few minutes ago. Just trying to do the maths with the green. 77. Yeah, he'll need the pink, won't he? Cause, uh -huh. uh, yeah, he will. That would actually get him to the century, but he's got to get on it first. Or oh, try and nudge it, but then he's got to sacrifice position. Eighty-two. Don't know whether they can drop that pink in the middle. Looks a bit tight to me. But well, this is super stuff from, uh, from Stuart Carrington. It really is. Now, will he take a risk here and try and flick the pink and come down for the blue? Might do. Aha! Yeah, well played. I thought he might play that. And he's come off the pink beautifully for the blue. He took a risk. He knew the frame was safe, but he wanted the century. Well, <laughs> come on, Stuart. Knock this blue in and make three on the bounce. Well, he's playing like those players I just mentioned, those great yep. players who've made the three on the spin. Go on, get in. Get in. Yes, well played. Well, I'll tell you what great stuff this is. Fantastic. This is dream snooker for Stuart Carrington. Pink for three centuries in three frames. Only the fifth man to do that at the Crucible. Fantastic. It doesn't get any better than this, whoever you are. Stuart Carrington, the world number 48, makes three centuries in a row at the Crucible to take a grip on the match. She leads Liang Wenbo by five frames to two. Cracking stuff. 20. Well, he's gone slightly wrong. Still has a pot on the blue, and he can hold for one of these reds, but uh, there's, there's pressure on this. 4-2 behind. He knows that Stuart's playing well. Well, he seemed to just yeah, throw himself into 20. that. He didn't cue it at all. Well, he's... That was really edgy. Yeah, it was definitely edgy, wasn't it? And just reflects what's happened last couple of frames. That was not cleanly struck at all. Well, it just seemed like if it had gone in, it would have been a bonus rather than playing it in. It's, he's under pressure. He's feeling it. Yeah, not the sort of shot I guess he was looking for after Carrington knocked in a couple of tons. Well, he's got a chance to do more damage here. Well, there's no doubt that Stuart Carrington is in much more control of him himself than that the Liang is at the moment. And that's the key. That's the point Ronnie O'Sullivan was making. It's a, not just about talent, it's about temperament as well. Mark Selby, he said if you put Selby's brain into Liang Wenbo, he'd be unstoppable. But of course, it doesn't work like that. Everyone's different. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. This guy's shown a lot of strength at the moment, though. He really has. He's been impressive. You know, he, that, that second frame, if you weren't with us earlier, it was a horrible frame of snooker. It was 45 minutes, very scrappy. He was always in front. He had chances to win it, and he didn't win it. Liang stole it, and that uh, was an early body blow, but he recovered really well. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned earlier, David, you said that you saw the last few frames of his qualifying match against Mark, Welly, uh, Mark Williams, and you said you were very impressed by him. Right. Well, the last frame in particular, he was, he was a long way behind. He was 9-7 up, 60-odd behind, cleared up to win on the black. You know, and if Williams wins that frame, you start to maybe fancy Mark to win the match, but held himself together really well. That was a good omen coming into this match because he beat the top-seeded player in the qualifiers, Mark Williams, world number 17, highest-ranked player in that qualifying event and highly fancied to reach the crucible again. Yeah, and before that match with Mark, he, uh, he talked away Alex Borg 10-2 and also Andrew Higginson 10-6. Yes, he'd already won 30 frames before getting here, so he was toughened up.
by that week. 17. I'm going to be into them here. Slightly loose one on the right hand side. He could sort of push that out towards the middle. I think he's got enough angle on the black here to get into them. And he has got a lot of cue power, actually, Stuart. He can uh, generate a lot of spin. And we know that these cloths are very reactive, responsive. He's got them. Oh, done it again. Got them open, landed perfectly on one. Well, he's just serene at the moment. We saw Liang miss that blue. Didn't really get close to it.